Finally, we have Jesse Rice. One of the most predominant news stories over the last decade has been that of climate change. Specifically, the effect that climate change has had on global ice sheets and glaciers. Now, when people have this in mind, they tend to think of either rising sea levels or climatic changes across the globe. With this in mind, it's hard to imagine how the transportation limit or geological location of an ice margin 18,000 years ago is relevant today. However, Industries that are very important to us today rely on these types of questions in order to produce the kind of lifestyle we're used to. This industry, of course, is mining. So how does mining involve the use of these questions in order to sustain this type of lifestyle? Well, as you can imagine, one of the most important, method, important parts of, this, of establishing a successful mine is first finding an economically viable mineral deposit. Now, since the invention of satellites and aerial uh, physiographic analysis, the majority of superficial deposits have, de have been found. So what does this mean for geologists today? That means that the majority of the deposits out there today are under some overburden. And in the case of Canada, a lot of this overburden is glaciogenic in origin. This is where glacial drift prospecting comes in. Glacial drift prospecting is essentially, as a glacier goes across a deposit, it fractures that deposit and traps it within the ice and the material associated with that ice, disperses it down ice, and deposits it. So it sounds simple enough, right? Grab a buddy, grab some shovels, dig some holes, look at the soils, analyze them, find an anonymous uh, reading within that sample, take it up ice, remove the overburden, start a mine, then start planning your retirement. However, one of the biggest mistakes that these exploration companies make is oversimplifying the glacial history of those regions. This means that as they trace their samples back ice, they're missing their target deposit and unnecessarily drilling in regions that they have no business drilling. My, my research through the microscopic analysis of glacial sediments aims at improving the existing methods in order to refine these existing approaches for rebuilding glacial history. Glacial micromorphology involves the association of microstructures within sediments to get a better idea of the deposition, transportation, and deformation of glacial sediments on a scale that can't be seen within the naked eye. This tool can be used with existing features such as landscape analysis, uh, bedrock erosional records, and other sedimentological analysis methods to gain a better understanding of the glacial history of that region. It is our hope that through this research that one day the microscopes we use and the materials and energy used to create them will be the result of actually the use of that microscope itself. They'll be signing autographs during lunch if you're interested. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, our judges have to uh, come to consensus on a winner and a runner-up. So I'm going to escort them to a secret room and uh, they're going to uh, come to some sort of de de decision. Not really, it's 411 actually. Um, our, our results. The results of the, uh, our 3MT competition today are going to be announced at our at the uh, GSA social tonight at Isaacs. So soon after you get there, we, we do a bunch of things. We have the draw and we'll announce our results of our 3MT. So at this point, I'd like to again thank our competitors, <clears throat> thank the committee for putting this together, uh, particularly Heather. Um, it was great working together to put this together for our first year. Our judges, uh, terrific. Thank you very much for um, covering the event. We look forward to your decisions. And um, in regard, Mike, in regards to uh, uh, our conference, we have lunch coming at noon. So please um, stick around. Our, our buffet lunch will be uh, just where the snacks are at the beginning. The speakers entertain uh, questions? <laughs> <laughs> Not formally. <laughs> sure. So our speakers will be here if you'd like to talk to them after. Thanks for coming today, and uh, we'll see you during the session.